In the previous videos, we have discussed about the steps to design the shear reinforcement. It involves quite a number of equations and so many parameters are involved. To prevent confusion, this video is recorded in order to briefly outline the design steps for the shear reinforcement. For more details in terms of the usage of the equation, you may refer to the previous video. Now let us get started. The design step starts with calculating the shear loads acting on the member. Next, you will need to determine the VRD maximum. This VRD maximum is for you to define whether you can proceed with the calculations or the sections needs to be redesigned. Check this VRD maximum against the VED, the shear loop. If the shear loop is greater than X resistance, that means the entire section needs to be redesigned. If VED is less than the shear resistance, you may proceed for the next calculation step. Then you need to determine the shear capacity of the concrete without shear reinforcement. The purpose is to determine whether the section has adequate shear resistance without the enhancements of the shear reinforcement. There are two conditions here, which is defined by the flexural tensile stress less than or greater than the design tensile stress of the concrete. These conditions will define whether the concrete is cracked or uncracked under the load. We will need to determine the locations of the cracked regions and also the uncracked regions. When the flexural tensile stress is less than the design tensile stress of the concrete, the section remains uncracked and you may use these equations to determine its concrete capacity in shear loop. Check against VRDC1 with VED. If VRDC1 is more than VED, that means you do not actually require the shear reinforcement. However, for safety measure, we will provide the nominal shearing. The equations for the nominal shearing is this. In the case that the VRDC1 is less than VED, shear reinforcement bar will be required. With that, you will need to use the equations for the normal shear reinforcement to determine the amount of shear reinforcement required. The second conditions for the concrete capacity under shear is that the flexural tensile stress is greater than the design tensile stress of the concrete. This is the stage where the concrete has already cracked. X shear capacity is given by these equations, which is VRD C2. And the shear capacity is checked against the crack shear, which is determined from the calculation steps outlined here. If the resistance is greater than the shear loads, nominal shearing is provided. If it is less, shear reinforcement is provided. The calculation step D and E here represent the equations for the nominal shearing and also the normal shearing respectively.